All right, welcome everybody. Uh, just a quick review. Uh, for those that joined me yesterday, instead of watching the president, we did a nice little uh, presentation, which has been posted on YouTube. So you guys can check that out. It was about a 55 minute about what indicators I use and what we're looking at. And just did some review of some trades. But in the meantime, for Friday, we have the PCE number out. Uh, we had more of a market route, uh, meaning downside action overall let's uh before i really get into everything just as a reminder this week's uh newsletter we did post this before i'll do it again uh i I'm not ready to go over what beamer imaging does it's just another order just every time i do these updates i just show you what the current positions are from the weekly newsletter uh we did get filled on devon energy we did get filled on fastly cover that uh, Monday, the S&P 500, that was a new new short position. I believe we covered that on Monday um, or didn't cover this, but we, we went over the information about the bear put spreads on the September expiration. Uh, that seems to be probably one of the better trades for the week. Uh, Etsy, not much. AT&T, big move today, came off the highs. Pfizer, uh, again, been in that position forever. Comcast. You know, I'm probably going to get married to Comcast because of the 3% dividend yield and the fact that they were awarded the NBA contract instead of Warner Brothers. And I CNBC, they tend to take a story, beat the crap out of it. There's 9,000 stocks, but yet they'll really pound on one story for a few days. They did it with Warner Brothers. And then you won't, now that the Warner Brothers lost and they're going to sue the NBA, um, but the bottom line is you don't hear them talk about it anymore. They did this to Disney, if you recall, with David Einhorn and the board, I think it was. And uh, the stock was at 123. For a whole week, it was nothing but Disney board, Disney board, Disney board. Stock goes to 123. All of a sudden, okay, uh, the board's happy, everyone's happy. And then CNBC stops talking about it. Next thing you know, Disney's trading now today. I think it had an intraday low of around 89 and change. I'll cover that in just, just a sec um, and what to do there. Uh, Biogen's okay. Kohu missed, did not uh, in the semiconductors. Ugly, ugly day in the semiconductors. Gilead Science doing pretty well. And Fortinet, I'm pretty sure uh, that's a right stop to have at 5608 because that to me is starting to look scary on a monthly chart. Let's get into it right now. Um, let's cover Fortinet right now. We'll just take one, take one step at a time. So let's take a look at a monthly chart. First and foremost, we're going to go back about 15 years. Let's go day. Let's go month and hit OK. We're using Thinkorswim. Uh, I look at this and I go, hmm, monthly sell signal. Uh, volume is making newer lows. And uh, on a weekly basis, I look at the weekly basis. I go trend consolidation. It's eking lower on balance volume, tr leading prices lower. Uh, last time we had kind of a pattern like that, it looked like a bear flag. And if it is, the measurement objective on that position it's going to take us down to around 40 45 47 range right back to the like around where these long shadows are so uh, i'm not a big fan of fortinet not having any kind of a turnaround especially uh since we have crowdstrike in the news crwd let's take a look at crowdstrike crowdstrike i still think has more downside coming uh volume didn't uh, perk its head Another thing that we mentioned today was um, CDNS Cadence, which makes a uh, software des design for semiconductors. One of their biggest client happens to be NVIDIA. It, all day today, we said we had a wild lower open today. I mean, it opened, then it pounded, and then we saw some amazing pickup in stocks on lows with Microsoft and the, the heads of the Phi family. As the day progressed, all of those names kind of gave it up. And one of my thoughts as I posted in the room was, um, guys, if cadence can't go up, then that that says that, hey, we don't need any more uh, designs. Uh, we're not selling chips. So NVDA, let's take a gander. Um, NVIDIA, look, this is a trend. If this is a, a kind of like a, a, a flag or a, a, a consolidation pattern and you extend it, we're expecting a little bit more, maybe 110, which we hit 106 today. I'm thinking this market coming back to test 110. Let's double check this real quick. Daily charts, gap here, mega gap 97. So maybe there's there there isn't just a lot, a little more to go. There might be a lot more to go. I don't think that the 
overall correction is over. It's it didn't top out in one day. It's not going to bottom out in one day for sure. So we are. I'm expecting a little bit more relative weakness out of uh, the semis over the next maybe the rest of this week. I don't think first off PCE the the consumption expenditure personal consumption expenditure it's like you take uh and and that's supposedly what the fed looks at i don't even know if the fed looks at it but it, the street is expecting the fed to look at it so therefore everyone's looking at it um uh, private reports are explaining to me that um room rents on average square foot apartments of 870 square feet are up almost two percent from month ago figures that's not good nationwide average. So if rents are up, that's inflationary. Beef prices are up. Um, I didn't, I, I don't have um, all the indicators up here to share with you, but if you look at live cattle prices off the charts, uh, yes, copper's gone down. Interestingly enough, reformulated blend gasoline is about the same price as it was last month. So I'm not quite sure how they're going to manipulate the numbers, but I wouldn't expect, I'd be very shocked to see the PCE number come down dramatically and that'll take kind of like the the wind out of the sails and that will probably accelerate more downside in some of the mega cap names my guess we have a couple of trend lines that we've done in here and pivot support in in microsoft right around 416 is a pivot support but we break this support and the next one you can clearly see it's targeting for the next week around 400 and that might bring in some buyers so more or less uh just to let you know uh you know if we take this as a a b c d wave we're talking yeah around maybe 400 a little bit lower in microsoft minor gap here existed 400 so i wouldn't i wouldn't get too crazy but i would definitely look for a a buy at 397 400 in software enterprise nobody likes it except for mongodb just to give you an, an idea you know, it already debacled. And uh, with, uh, again, a ServiceNow's uh, report, which was unbelievable, um, MongoDB holding up. I mean, it's a sideways range. Volume's leading it okay. I mean, any any it seems to be in this trading range for the last month, but on relative weakness in, in um, technology like Microsoft, any follow-through based on negative PCE number, um, I, I would not be afraid of buying it around 228. First off, we got to get through 241 down to 2, 230, let's call it. And I think you can take a stab at that. More importantly, Snowflake um, in cloud storage data. Um, this is another one that, look, the price is pulled back. It didn't have any follow through. Uh, it wasn't quite an equal and opposite candle pattern. It doesn't have a buy, but the on-balance volume is holding up. So again, um, I would I would say the PCE number and then the Friday end of day, let's double check something here. You know, if we can get a, a positive close, I'd be interested in, uh, again, I think a couple things that you can look at. Buy the stock, sell the um, September expiration, 57 days out, I believe it is. The one, um, I believe it's the 150 strike calls and you can collect $5. So, I mean, or we could we'll we'll come up with a a, a better uh, opportunity using an option because that's a lot of cash for small accounts to be plopping down. Uh, you know, e even looking at a, a you know a thousand shares is is you know ten options. So it's not really going to be conducive for a you know small account size. We got to use options on that particular trade. But in in software enterprise, I do think based on this one company right here, ServiceNow making new highs and based on this other little company which said their their bulk of their sales and the earnings call was due to software so software now it's not, not that now the the next big leg forward for artificial intelligence is people had a lot of expense they paid for um chips now we got to provide a return on investment roi and where is that going to go it's going to go in software companies so a company like Adobe, are they benefiting from all their expenditures? I don't see it. It's in a weekly sell mode and uh, it, it might see, again, a pullback. And my two cents is this is a green candle right there. We call that a benchmark, the midpoint right against these old highs, somewhere against in here, 490. I mean, that's $40 from here. 
not not that big of a deal. So I think there's still more bloodletting coming into the market in in the mega caps. So I, I between Microsoft, Amazon is an interesting one. It you know again I look at these pivot levels and I go it's almost like a magnet. It wants to get there. So uh, once we break support, once we break underneath uh, the moving averages and we get a PPS sell signal on a weekly basis, uh, now we have a consecutive series of a lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low combination. We just haven't fulfilled maybe a um, exhaustion bottom. Speaking of exhaustion bottoms, now this is a long shot, but a lot of uh, sales coming across the pike. Uh, we had uh, a couple interesting concepts looking at the um, retail apparel. This is a company called Foot Locker. And I was shocked to find out that they pay a 6% dividend yield uh, on cloud, whatever, you know, they definitely they sell as well on cloud sneakers. I'm sure you have seen on cloud. A lot of people say that uh, on cloud, not on cloud semiconductor, but on cloud ONON is the apparel footwear on cloud holding. This is a company that has um, kind of taken the world by storm. A lot of people for casual shoe wear. I don't think it replaced Nike, but it definitely is a fashionable trend. A lot of people wearing them and they can be kind of displayed as kind of a, a hybrid workplace uh, type of, I guess, casual wear. But a lot of people, you know, um, it, it, it that and Hoka and New Balance, uh, Skechers, et cetera. Uh, to me, the one shop place, I'm not sure people where, where they're all buying all of their, their, uh, regular apparel wear and, and footwear, but on cloud is sold at Foot Locker. Something to concern your to not concern yourself with, but poor choice of words. Something to pay attention to on Foot Locker. We're going to have an exciting list of stocks. This seems to have on, on Friday with uh, running our weekly scans, but this, this did form a mild high close doji. It traded above the pivot level and it might be, you know, one of those stocks under the radar. We had Deckers, D-E-C-K. Deckers came out. Um, again, it's pretty crazy. Um, Deckers bid ask, uh, look at that, 925. That's on an earnings spike, fill the gap. So people are spending money on uh, outdoor sportswear, footwear. Uh, one thing that they, again, I'm not quite sure that they're not spending money here, but this is Lululemon. It came with a downgrade, a double downgrade, which is crazy because it, it got an upgrade somewhere up around in here. And so they upgraded the stock at the high. And then uh, Wall Street, you had TD Cowan and I think City uh, both downgraded the stock and lowered their price targets to like, I think something like 300. And uh, today that that the market just took it out to the woodshed down an extra 10%. This is a gap lower, uh, could be seen as a breakaway gap, measuring gap, exhaustion gap, three gap method right in here. My two cents is it's probably closer to the bottom. It didn't, and you know, give this another day or two. If you, if you know, day being Friday and then into Monday, if it doesn't have any major follow through and the volume doesn't make a newer low, that would be a kind of a volume convergence pattern. And we might see, um, you know, a, another couple days before, you know, one or two days, and then you get a, a counter trend recovery. So Lululemon's pretty cheap. Another disaster was Edwards Life Sciences today. Um, these are these are just punishing trades. Can you imagine? You know, you have a portfolio with a few of these names, and I mean, you're not out five uh, percent of your equity. You're out like fifty percent of your equity. That was a that was just a disaster in there. So I just want to point out um, when when we look at some of these trades, uh, first and foremost, what I'm looking for is what is the trend of the volume. If you make a double test of a high and the volume's no good, we don't want to take that trade. So. The moral of the story is tomorrow, I think um, we take a look at Goog and I want to finish up with Goog because I said the other week, go ahead of into earnings. The earnings were so good. The supposition was I was looking for a retest. We put it on an option strategy and it's not going to work. Now, what we see is the gap. It looks like they're going to come down and want to fill this gap. So we'll really revisit looking at Google on a gap fill down here around 162 to 164, just to challenge that. It's not that far away. Another bad day like today, and you're there. And I would uh, be looking at a, if as long as that volume is not 
that bad. In other words, as long as the volume on a daily chart doesn't look like this where it leads us lower. So this had an ugly close. It closed below the swing low this morning, gave a nice little uh, $4 uh, intraday move, but failed on the close. So here's the end of uh, day wrap up. So, you know, watch, watch Goog to pick up some at around 164, 160. Two and a half, somewhere in there tomorrow. If we get that lower open on a negative PCE, you want to, you know, it'll be just like today. It'll probably open lower, trade lower, and the next thing you know, pop up a little bit. There's a lot of support down there in Alphabet. Um, that would be about it, except for one more thing IWM. The Russell still has the capacity. The volume wasn't great today, but one of the things that I like, and again, the week's not over, but Markets that close the end of the week above their weekly pivot when it's giving a bullish structure. In other words, higher predicted high for the week, higher predicted low for the week. And the market, for the most part, stayed and respected the pivot point. If the Russell can maintain closes, positive closes above the weekly pivot, that's that's a good thing. And how good would it be? Longer term, let's take a look. You got a uh, a breakout, a consolidation, call it a wedge, call it a, a just a sideways uh, pennant formation, and, and I'm not going to draw the trend line, but you can see from this high to that high and from in here, you can see the, the, the rising support. As long as we hold greater than the pivots, this is giving us a, the idea that we could see uh, a bigger move longer term. Bull markets, you know, they, they kind of start to rise very slowly. Don't buy breakouts in here. But one thing I like is this market broke out of a high, closed above it. This is now one week two week and what do we have going on here consecutive series of higher lows higher lows higher highs closes greater than prior highs closes greater than opens ladies and gentlemen that's a bull trend so as long as the end of the week we maintain that structure uh that's a positive because even the weekly on balance volume is leading prices so sneakily i know there's a lot of chatter about the russell going a lot higher and growth is in vogue but man as you can see they're selling off the mega caps. Money's moving into this Russell. If you believe in measurement objectives and chart trading from this low to that high, if you add that distance, which was from the November lows to the, let's say the December highs, and you add that to the last uh, low before the breakout, which is here. So you take this measurement, 162 up to like say 200, let's just round down and say 40 points, add 40 points to 199. And you're at 240. And what's 240 represent? The old high. So just a retest of the high is very possible. So I, I believe that with the IWM September 233, 235 bull call spreads might be something to consider. And again, I will update you that. We'll have an exciting end of the week wrap up as and take a look at our weekly scans. If you're not familiar with it right here, use the scans, buy signals, license studies, persons, indicators, PPS buy and sell will give you definitive results. And you could just currently run a weekly right now and I'm doing Russell 3000. And it's already telling me today, if Friday we end up at these current prices, these are the stocks that are gonna generate in the sector's weekly buy signals. Phillips 66, we got some of these materials, Louisiana Pacific, LPX, industrials, Big concentration of buy signals out of industrials. A lot of those are small cap. How do I know? Look, um, $86. I mean, you can just see clearly these are a lot of small caps. So a lot of money going into smaller caps. Steel case, definitely a small cap name. So they're all in the Russell 3000 and the 2000. Consumer discretionary, consumer staples, healthcare, lots of biotech, lots of drug companies. And as IT is concerned, information technology, not a whole lot. So that's uh, where we're getting money to go into the market on a weekly basis on industrials for this particular week and small cap and some consumer discretionary. That's all I've got for tonight. Watch those support levels in Googs. And uh, I hope uh, we'll, we'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks a lot for listening. And I hope you found the uh, information helpful. By the way, Target is a follow-up. We did get stopped out of Target. Target is out, but I will be revisiting it. Uh, this had everything going for it except for one thing. It weakened, here it is. Uh, it just couldn't get above that weekly progression of the higher pivot. 
and uh, the resistance didn't hold or the resistance held and uh, that was it. So we had a stop in, we're out. I will revisit this. I think bottom line, um, you know, is the next support level going to be 132? Not quite sure, but uh, it's still in a weekly buy. I just used discipline and took a few bucks hit on target. And to me, I think it's worthy of, of trying again because I think this is a stock that will be back up to test 220. I'm not quite sure it's September, October, November, but it's a trade I want to be on. Uh, volume on the downside here for this week wasn't heavy. So with that said, just uh, complete transparency. Good luck trading tomorrow. Thanks again, everybody. And we'll see you in the next video update.